G'day and welcome to this week's video. My name is Ashley Rowan and I'm a financial planner with Consortium Private Wealth. Today we're going to be discussing tips to make your first $100,000. As it is often said that on the road to $1 million, the first $100,000 is the most difficult. So in this presentation, we'll look at some strategies and some uh, useful information so we can fast track that first $100,000. So a big strategy involves compounding interest. And compound interest is essentially interest paid on the initial principal, as well as the accumulated interest on money you have borrowed or invested. Now the difference to compounding interest is just simple interest, which is in the form of a, a term deposit, for example, where you remain invested for a certain term. And at the end of that term, say six months or 12 months, a bit of interest is paid back in your account. So where compound different sort of stands apart, the interest that's returned is then reinvested and it helps generate additional returns as, as we move forward. Now, as I said, the first 100,000 is the most difficult to accumulate. And before compounding interest can have a meaningful impact, there essentially needs to be a critical mass. And to put that into a real life scenario, let's say we achieve a 10% return. Now, if we only have $1,000 invested, that 10% return is essentially $100. Whereas if the critical mass, you know, if that $1,000 was now worth $100,000, a 10% return is more meaningful. And our account balance after that stage can go up by an extra $10,000. So once we get to, you know, a key figure there being $100,000, that's when our returns and compounding interest can really have an effect. Now, if we look at this graph here, um, it's a simple scenario. It, it looks how long it takes us to reach that $100,000. Uh, and in this criteria, we have a, a person saving, starting from an initial balance of zero dollars, but saving one hundred dollars per week. Now the the interest is compounding on a monthly basis, um, and the rate of return where these funds are invested is achieving a you know a conservative seven percent return. Now based on this graph, it takes twelve years, uh, or just over twelve years, for that individual under that strategy to achieve their first one hundred thousand dollars. Moving forward after that, if they continue to do this for the longer term, um, it will take them 39 years to achieve their million dollars. So if their goals and objectives was to become a millionaire, the first $100,000 would take 12 years to achieve. The remaining $900,000 only takes 27 years. So 12 years compared to 27 years where the, the initial amount, the initial goal was $100,000, where the remaining $900,000 only took the 27 years, you can see that compounding has a real, uh, real impact on how you know your investment can grow in value in a, in a short period of time. So how do we get to $100,000 quick? Um, ideally, you want to have a savings plan. Uh, you want to be consistent with that, um, and, and in conjunction with your savings plan, you know, creating a budget. Uh, do not overspend. Now, if we're looking at a time frame of 39 years to reach our uh, $1 million goal, we, we need to start young. So, you know, we've all gone through uh, being young and being, you know, you know, cash flow tight and, and our ability to, you know, to save money and, and not overindulge is quite difficult. But if we can get into good habits early on, um, this is where we can, you know, start the basis of, you know, saving to $100,000. Okay, so savings plan, creating a budget and investing that money. So, you know, we may save $100 per week, for example, but if it's sitting in cash, we're not going to achieve that 7% return, which was highlighted in that graph prior. If it's sitting in cash earning, you know, half a percent interest or 1.5% in a term deposit, for example, we will, we will not make $100,000 in 12 years. It's going to take a lot longer. So we may need to invest into more um, growth options. Another point to consider is we, we don't have to invest in our own names. Um, we can utilize superannuation. So, you know, at the age of 15, 16, 17, we might have our first job and, and at that stage we may getting paid employer contributions. So their 9.5% SG payments, you know, is, is gonna help us accumulate in those early years. On top of that, we can make personal contributions. So whether that be personal concessional where we're claiming a tax deduction for, you know, income tax purposes, um, that could be in the form of salary sacrificing or while we're young and our income it can be considered low, um, we can take advantage of you know a non-concessional contribution. So that's with um, you know after your income's paid into your account, you make that personal contribution into your fund, 
and as a non-concessional contribution, uh, there's an opportunity to um, receive the government co-contribution. So for low income earners, if you place $1,000 into your super fund, you know, there's potential there that you'll receive a $500 deposit from the government. And given that the time frame, you know, the, the whole strategy reaching out to, you know, 100,000, but then to a million dollars, you know, could be over 39 years. If it's in superannuation, that's fine. By the time we reach our goal, we, we most likely to reach preservation age um, as well, it's where we can access funds within superannuation. Now, if we have a look at this strategy, um, this looks at like the impact, um, having a lump sum available very early on. And, and in this case, we've got an initial deposit of $30,000. So this could be, for example, a 25 year old with $30,000 in superannuation. So we're kickstarting from that point on. If they then make a $100 contribution per week into their super fund, now that works out to be you know, $5,200 per year contribution. Um, if this is done on a weekly basis, then they'd reach a million dollars. So if their goal was to you know, accumulate a million dollars in, in retirement savings, this would be done in 34 years. So this is a five year saving to the to the standard scenario we, we went through just earlier where it was just pure $100 per week uh, into an investment account. So this is a five year saving um, and the initial deposit was only $30,000. So there's a lot of people in this situation through the early, early 20s with those funds within their account. So it's quite achievable. If we look at this graph now, this is that $30,000 initial investment once again. But instead of $100 per week, we're now placing in $200 per week. So we're doubling our contribution and we're doing that for 27 years and we'd have reached $1 million. So back to the original scenario of just $100 per week, no initial deposit. This is a saving of 12 years. So this will take an individual 27 years based on a 7% return to accumulate $1 million. So very achievable, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the opportunities to save quicker uh, obviously include superannuation. So we can start off with that, that nice lump sum. That's a great starting point. Make the most of personal contributions. So this is could attract the government co-contribution, for example, and, or if it's a concessional contribution, you may be paying less income tax along the way. So personal contributions into superannuation are very effective. And make use of lump sums wisely. So for example, um, you know, throughout the journey, you may sell a house and have, you know, pocket some um, profit or some surplus amount. What you do with that lump sum is very important. Or on the other hand, you may receive an, an inheritance uh, along the journey as well. So make good use of these lump sums. Um, consider large expenses carefully. So if you're going out to buy a new car or, or a new house, can you afford it? Is it going to put pressure on your cash flow? What are the loan repayments like? If it's going to impact your ability to accumulate you know, you're a million dollars, whether that's in superannuation or in your own name, you know, spend some time considering this purchase and if it's completely necessary. Uh, the next option, make extra home loan repayments or save to invest. So this is, you know, if you're putting an extra hundred dollars per week into your home loan to, to you know, the shorten the duration of that loan, um, you know, what's the alternative? Instead of that hundred dollars per week, you know, reducing the home loan, um, why don't you divert that $100 into a savings plan? Um, at the moment, we've got record low interest rates uh, for home loans. So if we can chase the, you know, a better return through investing than what we're saving um, in home loan interest, it may be wise uh, to consider investing and just paying your home loan at standard principal and interest rates. Uh, and this is a strategy that's becoming quite popular in recent times. Uh, next, invest wisely. Um, as I mentioned, it's no use saving in a cash or, or a, a term deposit where interest rates are, are, are terribly low. Um, you need to invest into some growth and, and diversify. And that brings us on to our next point um, that you need to speak with a, a financial planner, um, someone who can provide those recommendations and discuss those opportunities. So thanks for watching uh, this week's video. I hope some of this information was valuable.